All right, everybody, welcome. So I did a little poll before class here today, and we are going to focus on the money portion of manifestation, which is really great because I think money is something that a lot of people have energy around. Isn't that true? We have so many stigmas around it in almost any kind of culture that I think it'll be a really great area to focus on when we're talking about manifestation today. But I do want to remind you that anything I speak about when I'm talking about manifesting money, the same principles and theories apply, whether you're looking to manifest a relationship, a career, a house, whatever it is that you're looking for in your life, whether it be very broad or very specific, all can use these theories and these applications. So just notice because your unconscious mind is very, very powerful. So notice what it's saying to you. Notice what thoughts and ideas come up, not only tonight during class while you're or while you're watching the video replay, but also in your thoughts in the next day, perhaps in your dreams at night, because part of manifestation also is paying attention to what is the energy that you're looking for? What is the energy that you're trying to attract? Because one of the biggest challenges I see and the pe reason why people come to these classes is their manifestations are not happening the way that they want, right? So for example, perhaps someone is looking for um, that perfect relationship or that perfect job that's going to make them X, Y, Z around money, or they want their car or they want some, a house and they're really trying to manifest these things. They're really... I really want this house. I really want this house. And they sit down and sometimes they do affirmations and I deserve this house. I deserve this career money. I'm a money magnet and all the money just comes towards me. And they do all of these things. They meditate on seeing themselves, visualizing themselves with all this money in their bank account. And they do quote unquote, all the things. But they're not seeing results. And nothing seems to be changing beyond the energy and the effort that they're putting into it. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever really wanted something and not gotten it? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> right? So that's why it's important to start exploring where societal or childhood experiences, maybe your observations of other people, where your belief systems impact what it is you want. So let me give you an example. Your unconscious mind, one of the key structures of the unconscious mind is it's there to hold on to memories and bring memories up when they're important. So your brain starts looking at your memories and deciding how it's going to react now. It starts looking at how am I going to keep this person safe in whatever way safe looks like for the unconscious mind. Even if that means manifesting some pathological conditions, dis-ease, in order to kind of give you a little slap to say, hey, hey, I'm trying to get you to go over here and do this and realize this and you're not doing it. So now I'm going to, in order to keep you safe, I'm going to push these things towards you. I'm going to really bring this to your attention. Now, when it applies to money, just take a moment. What was it that you learned about money when you were young? What did you see? What did you hear? What did you feel? And this could be from parental, your parents. This can be from society. This can be from an experience that you had of where you lived or people talking. When you're young, ages zero to seven, eight-ish around there, you are like a sponge. Your mind is in a hypnotic trance type of state. In other words, the brain waves that you are in are the same that one is in when they're in, under hypnosis. So when we say that people are like little sponges, we actually really mean that they are sponges when they're children because they are unconsciously absorbing almost everything around them. And so now imagine that you're trying to manifest this money or you're trying to manifest 
a car. You are trying to manifest the house or the perfect career. Yet somewhere in your mind, you remember your parents saying that rich people are evil. Or they were complaining about their bosses at the job and how awful they were and how they treat all the little people wrong. And now your unconscious mind has decided that if you're in a position of a boss or of authority, or if you're making too much money, or if you have the nice house or the nice car, somehow your unconscious mind has decided that makes you bad or that makes you evil. And so then do you think your unconscious mind wants to help you manifest money? Or do you think it's trying to keep you safe by not letting you manifest money? <laughs> right? So imagine now instead that you explore that aspect for yourself. What do you believe that's positive and negative about the things that you want? Do you actually believe it's possible? What do people that have that, what do you believe about them? Is there jealousy? Is there envy? Is there some kind of heavy negative emotion? And so now, you realize what is holding you back from having that yourself. You do healing work. Perhaps you do some self-hypnosis. You take some NLP. You do some emotional freedom techniques or tapping. You heal those childhood belief systems. And now your unconscious mind starts seeing all the positives that happen when you, when you have money. That your life can be more comfortable. That maybe you can have those dinner parties at that house that you've always wanted that you get to give forward, that when you have enough money, you now get to share that with others. So now it gets to see all of the ways that money would not only positive benefit you, but maybe your children or your community or the people around you. You can donate to the organizations that you're so passionate about, <laughs> right? And so now your unconscious mind starts seeing that and as you start, I mean, even as you start thinking about all the good things that you could do with money and all the fun things that you could have when you have this house and all the fun things that you could do when you have this career and how you could impact people, how you could be a better boss than your boss has ever been. How, what is that doing to your energy? Do you feel how the energy goes up and it gets more positive and more vibrant and more light and raises up? Yes. Yes. So when we start focusing on that piece of it, on the positive aspects and clear any of that old energy. Remember that where our focus goes, energy flows. So if we're looking at all the positive aspects and we're training our unconscious mind to look at all of the positive aspects, our manifestations become much easier because then we have congruency between our conscious mind and our unconscious mind. And I will say, I'm going to use the word unconscious mind. Um, it's the same as the subconscious mind or the non-conscious mind. What it is, is it's that part of your brain that drives you forward. The part that regulates your breathing and your digestion and helps you make decisions. It's the part that drives down the road when you're not paying attention to where you're driving. <laughs> part that gives you dreams, right? It's that intuitive knowing, right? All of those are parts of your unconscious mind. So now your unconscious mind, now we've directed it to look at where is your abundant life? How is that going to look? How is that going to feel? How is that going to keep you safe? How is that going to keep you healthy? And now wouldn't it be great when you shift that belief, that money or the career or the house starts coming more naturally for you? Wouldn't you love that? So once again, what you need to make this happen is to clear those unconscious limiting beliefs, patterns, societal training, fears, right? Fears, maybe perhaps some people have fear of failures. Some people have a fear that, well, if I try this, people will think I'm stuck up or I'm snobbish or whatever. Right? We clear all those fears and we raise our energy. We raise our potential and that allows us to bring in what it is that we really, really true that know, truly know that we want and we deserve in our life, right? 
And now once we learn that, let me ask you a question. Have you ever received money? And yes. All of a sudden it's like gone away like poof. No, I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So one thing that I do see in a lot of people is they will get some money, maybe a Christmas present or a bonus, or they'll have a little extra money, or they'll finally build up their savings to a certain amount. And then all of a sudden, or they'll get the relationship they want, or they get the thing that I want, and then they start complaining about it. Well, I finally got the career I wanted, and my boss is such a jerk. I finally got the house I wanted. Oh, man, it's so much. The roof. I did repair the roof and that cost so much money. And oh my gosh, I had to mow the lawn the other day. And oh, and then it snowed after after I mowed the lawn. Now I got to shovel the snow and now I've got to deal with the water damage. And now I've got, right? And so they start complaining about whatever it is that they were manifesting. And now does that bring up the energy and encourage your brain to keep bringing you more money and keep bringing you the things that you want? Or do you think it starts shutting that down? So let's say someone gets $500 for a bonus and then they realize, oh, I need new tires for my car. Oh, and I need an oil change. Oh, and I, my, I need new clothes for work. Oh God, I got to get some shoes. And then next thing you know, the five the whole $500 is blown. And they're like, see, I don't have any money. I can't hang on to money. Or the thing that I have costs me so much money. And what happens then is they bring down their energy. They get caught in this like victim mentality. They get caught in like, how could this happen? How awful it is that all the savings I built up, that all this extra money I got from my bonus, that all the money I have for my raise, like all of that has now disappeared. And isn't that awful? Instead of looking at something positive, so have you ever been around somebody that's complained who gets exactly what they want and then complains about it, <laughs> right? They get the new relationship and then bitch all the time because their parent, their relationship isn't exactly the way that they want it to be, right? Or the person isn't giving them exactly what they want or speaking exactly the way they want and they're not around enough, right? So maybe you even caught yourself complaining when something anticipated comes up. So now it's really important to start looking at and catching ourselves when we do that, right? And once again, showing gratitude or feeling gratitude that we had that in the first place and start looking at, is something happening to me or for me, right? Okay, so I got this new relationship and maybe it doesn't seem on the outside to be exactly what I want, but what can I learn from this to make it closer to the relationship that I want? Or is this teaching me to have boundaries? Or is this teaching me to speak my mind, right? And so the same with money. So if you get the $500 and then you start complaining about the tires and complaining about the oil change, complaining about everything, instead of saying like, wow, I am so grateful I had that extra $500 to spend on that oil change without going broke. I'm so glad. I got to use that money from my savings to buy myself that new pair of shoes instead of breaking into my grocery money. I'm so glad and so fortunate that this money came to me right before I needed it. You see how that shifts the energy? And now is that pointing your mind towards poverty or towards abundance? Helping you manifest more? When you're looking at the gratitude, you're thanking the universe for what it's given you. Because remember that when we're buying things with our money, even if we're spending it on our bills, we're paying off our credit cards, right? We are exchanging that money for something of value or something that we valued at one point in time, right? We might value might not want to spend our money on new tires for our car, but we definitely value being able to get to work or having our freedom or not breaking down on the side of the road. So now we start teaching our unconscious mind to look at all the positives. And so now imagine now, 
as you start raising your vibration and start focusing your mind on all the positive things. In fact, you can even use things like self-hypnosis to remind yourself of all the positivity, all the joy, all the gratitude that you have in your life. You can start reminding it that you are a powerful being, that you deserve these positive things in your life, that you deserve more money, that you want to help these people, right? Look at all the ways you're being supported. In fact, one of the techniques that I learned when I came back from Europe, I was kind of in this place and it was during COVID and all this stuff. And, and um, I was feeling like, oh my gosh, I don't have anything. Like I don't have a job because I got shut down by the government. I can't get unemployment because I just spent the last two years in Europe um, and I wasn't able to get my work permit. So I was writing and I was doing work trade. And so I had no income. And so I couldn't even get unemployment at that time. And it felt really easy to like fall into the spiral of like, poor me, how am I going to do this? And what I was reminded is look at all the ways that you're being supported. And I was tasked with putting a dollar value on everything that I was receiving. So for example, I was staying with my former husband for free in his basement. So what would the dollar value be for that if I had to pay rent? I was escaping to my parents' cabin on some weekends. Well, if I had to rent out that cabin, how much would that cost? If I went and had dinner over at my parents' house, What's the value of that dinner if they were if they had taken me out to a restaurant and said, or even if I had to buy my own groceries and do it, what is the value of that? So I did some trades, some massage trades with people, right? What's the value of that massage? Like, yes, I'm giving, but I'm also receiving. So what is the value of all of this that's coming into my life, all of the support, all of the help? And it was amazing to me when I started putting a dollar amount to it. So how can you do that for yourself? How can you start choosing to see the ways that the universe is supporting you? How can you start changing your vibration, changing your unconscious mind? So it starts attracting more of what you want and more of the same positive things into your life. So to make this happen, once again, learning some self-hypnosis, learning to put yourself into a trance, calm down from your emotional state so you can really focus and see. Because when we're in a high emotional state, our brain can't think as logically, right? Have you noticed that? Like if you're all freaked out, or you're all emotional, or you're all stressed, you're all overwhelmed, you're all sad, you're all you know anxious, you know, if you're in that state, it's hard for us to focus on gratitude, isn't it? Uh -huh. So now when we bring ourselves into hypnosis, now instead what we get to do is we get to train our brain to calm down, right? So there's a technique I teach people about looking straight up at the ceiling with their eyes only and expanding their vision and taking a few breaths and what that does, that calms down our fight flight system. It allows that emotional state to start dropping. And when the emotional state drops, we can now see more clearly, more logic, more clarity, more concentration, and even more gratitude. Mm -hmm. So as you learn self-hypnosis, as you learn the techniques of going into trance, as you learn emotional freedom techniques or tapping, as you learn how to journal it out or to um, forgive yourself for some of the past mistakes, forgive some of the people for the training that they've taught you through, right? Refocus your unconscious mind from all rich people are bad to all oh, rich people can really give a lot. And therefore I want to have abundance and wealth as well. So I can also give forward. So I can also do good in this world. And when you get to do that, remember that where your focus goes, energy flows. And if your unconscious mind starts seeing safety in that money, safety in relationships, 
safety in your career, safety in your place in community. The more places it sees that you're safe and that you're a good person, the more it's going to get you there, right? So now you're training your unconscious mind to see all this safety, to see all the benefit in the money in a really positive and powerful way, in a way that aligns with you and who you are in your highest self and your highest spirit. Isn't that great? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So then once you learn and you start aligning your mind with your manifestations and you start raising your vibration to attract more, now how do you actually make the changes? Because one of the challenges that I see then also is people are like, they know what they need to do and they think they've tried everything. They're like, oh, I can't do it. I've tried. I tried doing it. I tried the manifestations. I tried the affirmations. I tried the healing work. Not getting better. I guess I'm just going to give up. We have a little adage that says, if you think it's the problem, it's often not it. So think about it this way. Thomas Edison, right? The inventor of the life, light bulb. Did you know that he actually got fired from two jobs because they considered him like not a hard enough worker? And then it took him over a thousand times to invent the light bulb. A thousand times. So how committed are you to your manifestations, to your goals, to your dreams? Are you committed enough to try a thousand things? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? So when we think we just can't do it, there's often little nuances Ways our unconscious mind is keeping us safe by not allowing us to do this. So this is an example I love to give my clients. So if I'm really angry at my former husband or my former partner or my ex, however, whatever I want to say about it, if I'm really, really angry at them and I'm trying to clear my anger and I'm doing Reiki and I went and I see a counselor and I'm doing all the things and I'm still angry and I can't get over my anger and I don't understand why I'm angry, but none of this works and what might be underneath my anger? Where might my unconscious mind be keeping me safe? So one example I like to give is sometimes our conscious mind has decided that if I forgive my former partner, my ex, if I forgive them, then I'll get back together with them and that's not what I want. Right? And so then the unconscious mind will keep this anger, keep this emotion in order to keep me safe or to protect me from a future relationship where that could happen again. And the same thing with wanting your ex back, right? We want our ex, I'm like, I want, I want my ex back. Like I learned my lesson. I want my ex back. I really, really like, why can't I get my ex back? And people are actually looking on YouTube for these things. Like, how do I get my ex back? How do I manifest this again? Where can I where can I make amends? Where can I get them to forgive me? Where can I make it better? But if we look deeper underneath that, what is under that? Well, usually wanting our ex back is dependent on something like maybe we felt safe in a relationship or maybe we like having companionship. Maybe somewhere in our training when we were young or in society, we learned that you're not valuable if you're not par a partnership, right? Or that you have to be married or that you have to be X, Y, Z, right? So there's all these ways that we learn that relationships are so important that when one ends, instead of being able to grieve it, take the lessons, move on and find a relationship that suits us better, we start going back and looking for the same thing. And this can happen in career, this can happen in money, this can happen in so many aspects of our life where we just as we get ready to grow, just as ready as we get ready to do a new thing, we get a little test. And we go, oh, no, no, no. We kind of back off and like run away. And I don't want this. This is too hard. Like, let me go back to where I was. But the thing is, is when we get that test, usually we're 80% through the healing process or 80% through the learning to get to the new thing. 80%.
So imagine now that we stick with it, that we keep working with that pattern of trying again and not even trying, but really looking at healing, really looking at changing our mind consciously and unconsciously. What was really great about that relationship? Great, go ahead and honor that. What wasn't so great in that relationship? Well, whatever made you break up with them, or if they broke up with you, the fact that they don't think you're a good fit and now they've released you for a relationship where someone will value you more. Isn't that amazing? Then instead of hanging on to you and just having a crappy relationship where they're not happy and maybe now you're not happy and you just perpetuate this cycle for years and years and years, they've let you go. So you get to find someone that values you and loves you and takes care of you more in the way that you need to be. And that's happy to be with you. Isn't that a blessing? Right? What a concept. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes we try for these things, right? We think we've tried everything and we're trying really hard and we're trying to get back to it with our ex. Or we're trying to make more money. Or we're trying to do all these things and we think we know what's it. Instead of giving up, I mean, have you ever given up? So often people will step back from something they really want. They'll stop making an effort. They'll stop healing. They'll stop whatever it is because their unconscious mind is keeping them safe, right? And even if we don't give up, sometimes we often will just shift like, oh, maybe I don't really want that anyway. I kind of thought I wanted that, but maybe I don't. We make some excuse and kind of wander back to something that feels more comfortable. So this is why it's important to always refine, to keep learning and to keep training. Because you think marathon runners also run marathons on their first try? No. Right, they've trained and trained and they've expanded and grown and they've built their body, they've built their mental mind capacity. Because I bet there were days where they're like, I don't feel like running, I'm gonna give up today. Just for today, I'm just not gonna run anymore. Right. But then they came back to it. Right. And the same thing with millionaires making riches on their first try. People building businesses, people becoming successful. Even spiritual masters, spiritual masters don't become masters after the first their first month of meditation. I mean, have you ever tried to meditate and gotten your mind perfectly quiet on the very first time you ever sat down? No. Oh. Right? Because it's training and it's always, things always are moving, right? Which is part of the natural energy of the universe. It's part of the cycle. Things build and then things break down and things build and things break down and things build and break down, right? It's cycle. It's creation, destruction, creation, destruction. We're always in this cycle, right? In different areas in our life. So now as we're trying to create the manifestations that we want, as we're trying to create the things that we desire, we also have to know that every once in a while we'll have to let go of something else, whether that be a belief, a pattern, a system. We have to kind of destroy something or let go of something in order to create something new, right? It's like if your closet's full and you try to shove more stuff in there, like sometimes you can shove more stuff in there and just shut the door and it's kind of all in there, but is that really going to be functional? Right? No. Right. Instead, we clear out stuff, clear out the pants that don't fit us that we're like, maybe I won't ever fit back into those again. And that's okay. So I'm going to take those out. I'm going to give them to somebody else that can use them. And then I'm going to put on pants that I love and that I feel comfortable in and that I feel solid in and that I feel supported in. Right? So now imagine you're doing this with your own life and your own manifestation, with your relationship, with your money, with your career, right? You're using tools, you're enhancing your learning. 
And as you do that, you also get to learn more about yourself, impact all the other areas of your life, right? Do we do this in, in hypnosis? The way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So when we shift one area, one belief in one area of our life, we start making impact in all of our other areas of our life. To have better relationships, higher vibration, more energy, easier manifestation skills, and make money, make the impact, fulfill our life purpose in whatever way that looks like for us. Doesn't that sound great? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. So as we can recap our three points on how we're unlocking potential, Right. The first thing is to get your manifestations by shifting your unconscious mind. And one of the ways to do that is emotional freedom techniques or tapping, right, which helps clear the old emotions from your system, but also self-hypnosis, teaching yourself to go into trance. Did you know that you're in trance about 80% of the day anyway? Right now? <laughs> of the day. Often you're in trance. Anything that implies trance also causes trance. So people are in trance when they're driving watching video in music so what are you learning what are you teaching your unconscious mind and you can be very very purposeful with that when you're in trance okay. and start remembering and reminding your unconscious mind that wealth helps people it's not just about you it's about everybody right and even if, and if you want it to be just about you, you get to make it just about you as well. And you get to clear all the projections out of all the people that may judge you for being wealthy. So it doesn't matter what it is that you eventually want to believe or want to know or want to understand or want to have. You get to create that for yourself in a really positive way. Because your unconscious mind knows how to do it. That's it. Yeah. It's changed before and now it can change again. So then we also learned about how to raise your vibration to attract more, that your energy goes where your focus flows. And if you're focusing on all the positive things that you want, if you're bringing your unconscious mind along to the safety and the benefits and the support that would give you, your family, yourself, your others, your relationship, your career, whatever that looks like for you, your spiritual practice, right? You get to have your manifestations that you're looking for. And sometimes it's just about showing your unconscious mind the way to get there. So if you want a million dollars, what does it look like to get there? Okay, well, maybe first I make 50,000, then I make 100,000, then I make 500,000, then I make a million. So sometimes it's also about breaking it down in a way that your unconscious mind can process those steps. And you learn how to do that when you learn really how to focus on what are the next steps? What can I take? What step can I take now? What can I heal now that brings me one step closer to that million dollars? What step can I take now that brings me one step closer to believing that I deserve that, to believing that I can help people, to knowing deep in my heart, my energy, my unconscious mind, right? Just like getting out of bed every day. <laughs> And that can be hard for some people. And so sometimes that's the first step is just getting out of bed every day. And that's great. That's okay. But if I had a program that would help you manifest and really align yourself to what you want and allow your unconscious mind to know how to get there easily, effortlessly, and in strong ways, how many of you might be interested in that? Right. Good. So a program that not only amplifies your own healing process and enhance your manifestations, and that also allows you to make money. So would you like me to show it to you? Yes. So the class that I'm teaching is a self-hypnosis class. And what's really lovely about this class is you get to learn the basics of trance, of men and uh, trance is kind of like thinking about it as a deep meditation. It's about putting yourself in the brainwave, in the higher level brainwaves that you are when you're absorbing everything when you were a child. But now you get to be purposeful about it. Now you get to decide what you want to go into your brain. And in this class, we also get to practice with each other. So you get to experience some hypnosis from other people. And in this class also, you get to learn 
not only how to put yourself in trance, but how to use it for better sleep, better manifestations, to control your emotional state, to help you have focus, to help you overcome procrastination, right? There's so many benefits to the self-hypnosis class. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the link right now into the chat. And that is the wrong link. So I'm going to look up the other link. It's something else that I cut and pasted last. So before I send that out, there we go. So this is the upcoming class. And now notice that I offer this class about once a month. So one day class. Normally this class is about four hundred or $250, excuse me. But what I want to do today, because I really feel passionate about this and I feel like this is part of my next step, really like how I'm supposed to help people in this world, I'm offering both the self and the higher self hypnosis classes for only $97 for this up next upcoming round. So up in here in April in 2023. So you can even bring a friend for free because I really feel like when we bring community around, we help support each other, Right. When you raise your vibration and you raise the vibrations of other, everyone raises together and it becomes easier and easier when we're all around raising each other. So the link is in the chat. So you can go ahead and click on that. Sign up for your tickets. If this date doesn't seem to work for you, you can click on the link as well at the, the um, organizer link and it will bring you to my next series of dates. And if you use the discount code hypnosis, which I'll also put in the chat, it will give you a discounted rate. So, and for those of you who have already taken it, you know that every time you take a class, you learn something new, right? You're up-leveling your knowledge because you hear things in a different way. You learn it at a deeper level. So every time you take something, Sometimes they say that you can, that you only learn about 10% of the knowledge in any class the first time around that you take it. And then the second time you take it, you can learn 70, 80, 90% more because now you have the basic concepts down. Now you've played with it in your life and now you actually get to hear it at a deeper level, at a more evolved level, at a more enhanced level. And then for those of you that actually want to do this for a living, I also do modern hypnosis classes where you actually get trained to do hypnotherapy. And the lovely thing about that is for that investment, you actually get to do hypnotherapy and it only costs, the cost that it takes to do two people will repay the investment of your class. So in other words, if you can get two clients, do you think you can help two people? Like, do you know two people that you could help in your life? Right? <laughs> you get two people. To hire you. I know two you people who need you know, help. Struggling with manifestation, with their relationships, with their money challenges, with negativity, with their workouts, with their overeating, with whatever it is in their life. If you can help two people, not only have you recouped the investment for the modern hypnosis class, but you've also helped those people. And it's a tool that you can use for the rest of your life. So I will also put that link in the chat. So normally that is a $1,400 class and I'm offering it today for $9.97. So that's that. I want to thank you for attending today. I look forward to seeing you in my future and upcoming classes. Um, if there are any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the chat or, you know, after I stop the recording, you can answer them because I know sometimes people like to ask personal questions that they don't necessarily want recorded and put up um, for other people to see. So thank you for coming and have a lovely afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching this. Hmm? Thank you. You're welcome.